Hey everybody, welcome to Fairy Stamper video. This is Tracy with the video design team. Tracy Fear, that is, not afraid of color. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple card using very small amounts of color. Just, just something new and simple today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I'm going to get out my gel plate and I usually like to clean it off with my uh, little chamois cloth uh, prior to use because it collects can collect little hairs and stuff even in its container as soon as I get it out. Um, and I'll be using this fairy hug stencil and I'll have all the items listed below in the description box below. And what I like to do is um, I've got my brayer and I'll be using Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide and what I like to do is actually, before I even spread my oxide on, I like to coat it in Versamark. It just seems to help the ink a bit, at least in my mind, not bubble up. And so I'm just going to brayer on the ink and um, get it spread out really well. And you see I've got my scrap piece of paper there beside me. And I'll go ahead and clean off my brayer there a bit. And then what I like to do is I like to lay the stencil on and then I'm going to lay the scrap paper on and push down on it pretty firmly and then pull up the paper and then I'll pull up the stencil and I'll take my um, four and a quarter by five and a half inch card and just lay it directly where the stencil was and use my scrap paper again to get it pushed in really well. And this will create the beginnings of our background. There we go. Pretty cool. I'll just wipe off my gel plate and you can see mine is well loved. I've stained it with God knows what, but. <laughs> Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a, a kind of a sun and a light source after I fill in the background with the um, speckled egg distress oxide and I want to keep the colors really muted on this particular card it's a uh, it's kind of away from my normal let's put lots of color and I'm just going with very very muted colors so the uh, speckled egg will be the only actual color everything else is gray black or gray <laughs> and I'll just kind of wipe up my mess there I don't want to get ink everywhere, which I normally do, but just in the interest of let's don't mess up this card because it is light colored and it's not easy to hide the boo-boos. I've made this mask out of a piece of acetate and just cut it out with the circle cutter and I'm just going to lay it there on the card. I'm going to take my white pigment ink and I'm just going to put some down on my, um, on my surface. And I'm going to use one of my little finger blender brushes and I'll just dip it in and then go ahead and fill in that circle. And that's kind of just going to represent a light source, the sun, the moon, whatever. Just part of the background. Once I've got all my white ink wiped up, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my tree placement. And I will be using my stamping platform for this because I may need to stamp more than once and there's no way in the world I can get it even. And here I'm using Verse Fine Clear in the Morning Mist. And I do like to kind of tape down my project. Um, to me, the magnets just don't hold, I, I don't know. I see other people and their magnets hold just fine. Mine just come right up. I'm going to use that acetate for placement. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lay the stamp right on top of the acetate. Close my lid, pull the acetate off, and then I'll ink up my stamp. There we go. Let's see if it's going to need more than one. Yep, 
Yep, it just needs a little bit more towards the top. I'm not wanting it to be dark, but I don't want any empty spots either. And so I'm gonna just gonna move my project over a little bit because I want a second tree. And wipe off my tree so that I don't accidentally get the ink where I don't want it. Now I'll use my acetate for placement again. I'll just lay my tree down. Whoops, it's coming up from the mat there. Ink it up again. I'm trying to wipe off that side there. I don't want ink everywhere. You'll have to excuse me. I've got the sniffles today. And I'm going to go ahead and use my little glider tool to press down on that. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and clean off my tree here and I'm gonna take my project out of my stamping platform for now. Just set it aside because the rest of the work that I'm gonna be doing for a minute is doing work by hand. And I've got this uh, fairy hugs poem, or this fairy poem that I'm going to be stamping on with some, actually the white pigment ink. So you can barely even see it, it'll be more like a, a watermark but I want that, um, you know, I want that extra texture in the background. So I'm just gonna kinda set it off to the side there. I'm gonna stamp it, you know, kinda hanging off the side. And then see, you can barely, barely see it. But if you look at the card up close in person, you can definitely see it. And then I'm gonna do a little bit here up at the top. And you can see that one a little bit better because it's a little bit darker at the, up there at the top. And I'm just going to clean off my stamp here. And I'm going to be using the large possible stamp today. Um, first, before I do that though, I want to trim my paper down because I want to, I want to mat it on a white cardstock. So I'm trimming it down to four by five and a quarter. That way I'll have a little bit of a white border all the way, all the way around. And I'm going to just make sure it's nice and dry because I will be heat embossing the uh, sentiment and I don't want my embossing powder sticking all over the wet ink on the card. So I'm just going to get it really nice and dry. And I'll get out my stamping platform again so that I can get good placement and, you know, I'll most likely need more than one because I am stamping over pigment ink and sometimes it doesn't like to get fully stamped. So I'll use my acetate there for my placement. Lay that on there, then lay my stamp on top of that, close the stamping platform, pull off the acetate. And I'm gonna be using uh, my embossing buddy here just to make sure that I don't get embossing powder everywhere. And I've got a, a big old container of clear embossing powder. So because I'm using clear, I like to use black versus fine clear ink. It stays nice and wet and it embosses very nicely. And I'm, I'm only lightly pushing because I see I've got a big black spot there that I don't want to transfer over to my, um, to my picture. And it's gonna be just two or three little Possibly, yeah, just one more. Make sure that it's filled in all the way. And then I'll go ahead and just pour my embossing powder over. Then get that out of the way and bring over my heat tool and heat emboss this. And I'm moving my heat tool back and forth pretty quickly and front and back because I don't want it to warp my card too much. This is just plain um, accent opaque. 120 pound cardstock and it does it will warp on me so I'm real careful with that and then once I've got that stamped and I'm happy with it I want to put the I do want to put you know an element of fairy fantasy in there so I'm going to find my little flying dragon he's about my favorite stamp he um it's just perfect size to accent something and yet still draw attention. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be just stamping him in plain black 
and I want to make sure that's down nice and tight so that I get a good good impression if I have to go more than once and then I'll go ahead and decide where I want to put him and yeah and he moves on me when I start to put it down I check it nope it's wrong let me just do it again there we go then I'll go ahead and use the first fine Claire there again in black and he, I believe he takes two two go rounds to get him get a nice deep impression but you see now I just noticed that my paper moved and who knows cross your fingers here I'm just gonna do a light stamp and call it done because I don't want a double impression and my paper did move on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of my stamping platform and then I wanna put some finishing touches on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of uh, use the VersaFine Claire again in the uh, morning mist and one of my little finger dauber blenders. And I'm just gonna blend all in around and then I realized I forgot to ground my um, trees there so I'm going to use this little acetate mask that I made and go ahead and get those grounded in with the uh, morning mist ink I'm just going to put a little on one side and then I'm going to kind of just make it into just two parts sort of there now I can continue with the get going around the card just darkening the edges a bit. You know, I'm just dabbing up some of that excess ink that kind of hangs off the edge of the acetate when you're doing those, um, those grounding pieces. Okay, and then I'm just gonna wipe up my mess here. I'm happy with that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it onto a piece of white uh, four and a half by or four and a quarter by five and a half inch card stock or card base and let me just grab my card card base here and I'm going to be using tape to lay it down and I'm just gonna do the the famous four corners trick and just put a piece of tape around each edge leaving a little bit on the first piece so that I can wrap when I come to that edge and if there's any excess hanging over, since I'm just ripping, I'll cut it off. And then I put a piece in the center. And I do like to make sure that's good and stuck down with my bone folder. And that's uh, my Teflon bone folder, by the way. And then I just go in and sometimes it, this tape is old, so sometimes it wants to pull it a whole self up. I just pull up each corner. And then I'll pull the middle and this way I can get good placement on my top folding card and I know I don't have to commit until I get it where I want and once I get it where I want I just push down on the middle and then I pull each side tab now this is really helpful if your paper is warped on you as well and one last thing I just want to do some little embellishment on here so I'm going to get my piece of scrap paper and I'm going to get out my fairy hugs glitter and my pen, my glue pen. And I'm just going to make little dots in the trees. And I like to do one side at a time because um, I don't know how fast this glue dries. I'm just familiarizing myself with it. And I don't want it to dry on me and have to do it over because I'm likely not going to find those spots again. So I'll do the one tree with the fairy hugs glitter and I try to get the thing open, but I'm afraid I'm going to stab myself. So I'm just going to twist it open and <laughs> do it the old fashioned way and maybe possibly get glitter everywhere, which is my MO. And so I'm happy with that tree. Now I'm just going to lay the card down. I'm going to do the other tree. Same thing, just little random dots here and there in all the branches. Kind of will give it an ice sort of effect, but this glitter is is colorful. It's a, what do you call it, like holographic almost. So 
finally I just want to put a, a little bit of glitter down here on top on the tops of the little hills like I said I, I want to keep this card really simple not too not too crazy on it uh, you guys get plenty of crazy from me in my videos so <laughs> let me do something simple and clean here so I'm just gonna clean up my glitter and with the on a wing and a prayer, I don't spill too much all over the place. I do have a cute little glitter vacuum that I use time to time. But anyway, here it is, here's the card. And um, I have made two of them. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and visit us at Fairy Stamper. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.